Psychedelics can open doors to deep personal insights, but further steps are required for the integration to happen and change to prevail. Welcome to a new episode of Entheogenic Renaissance. As you probably have guessed, today I am talking about integration. I did talk about it before, but today I want to unveil a very interesting document, and it is an integration guide by MAPS, Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies, that's been doing its work since 1986, and recently, actually like a few weeks ago, they published this amazing document. I wish I had this document when I was a young psychonaut trying to get my sense and head around the effects of psychedelics on my psyche and understand how to properly use them because you know in the majority of cases people use psychedelics for recreational purposes nothing wrong with it unless of course you are doing it without the precautionary measures don't forget watch how to avoid bad trip my key video on safety measures and harm reduction don't forget psychedelics are not 100 percent safe but they're significantly 10 times or even 100 of times safer than alcohol, the most worst drug on earth. But let's put that aside and talk about integration. So in this video, you will learn on how to integrate psychedelic experience, whether or not it's good or bad, or actually challenging experiences, they call it. And of course, what are the key elements of the structure suggested and proposed by MAPS? And I will walk you through on what to do and how to do it. But of course, you can go to their website or just Google MAPS Integration Workbook, download it. It's free of charge. It has 26 pages, uh, you know, it, it's golden nugget pretty much. So this is by far one of the best document ever created in psychedelic area for fellow psychonauts. The problem here is that in the majority of cases, people do not have access to psychedelic assisted therapy and of course to a licensed clinician or a guide or a sitter. Ideally, don't trip without a sitter, don't forget about that. And of course, don't break any laws, don't forget, laws are there to protect, <laughs> not even government, but anyway, in the majority of countries, psychedelics are still legal, so don't forget about that, all right? But there are countries where they are either decriminalized or legalized, so of course you can do whatever the hell you want with your psyche there, and nobody's gonna tell you anything. But what I was saying is that not in all of the cases people have access to a licensed professional who can help them, whether it is a psychedelic-assisted coach or a therapist or somebody else. So. This document is designed to basically give you guidance and self-help guide, pretty much. Self-hate instruction. <laughs> Not self-hate, self-help instruction. What am I saying here? But yeah, it is structured in a really nice and neat way. But coming again from my own personal experience, and I do know how psychedelics work and affect human psyche because I've been dealing with them for more than 21 years so far. I don't know, I don't remember. Anyway, long ago, more than my professional career at least, which is like 20 years in uh, sales and marketing and negotiation and client service, but eh, fuck that, let's put that aside. Anyway, so there are key elements of the structure of that guide. Those are, I'm gonna read it from my notes because I don't remember it by heart. So those are intention, supportive setting, mindfulness, integration plan, and finally, supportive system or supporting system. Let me quickly walk you through it. So um, first and foremost, what is intention? Uh, typically, whenever somebody is consuming an entheogen, ideally, they should have an intention in place. And what is an intention? It is like a phrase, like a sentence that you come up in your mind well, it could be something that you want to address. Maybe you get answers to some questions. Maybe you want to work on like deep causes of your behaviors. Maybe you want to understand something. Maybe you want to get a new perspective. Maybe it's something else. And there are like hundreds of examples, of course. And if you don't know what to come up with, yeah, let's discuss it in the comments because I bet there are people who have various intentions whenever they're doing the psychonaut journey on them own and of course let's build a community so that people can share their own experiences for 
reducing harm and, you know, work towards sharing information. Right, so intention is critical. So before consuming an entheogen or at the beginning of your journey, set intention, sit, close your eyes and use your inner monologue or dialogue system, I don't know, whichever you're using to just talk through internally what do you want from that experience. Of course, don't forget that entheogens do not show you what you want. In the majority of cases, they show you what you need. But intention is critical because whenever you're crystallizing it, you're sending a signal to your deep levels of psyche to get the answers. And because psychedelics are mind manifesting, well, that's a translation of the word at least, your psyche comes up with the answers to your questions. All right. So hope that's clear. If not, put it in the comments. I'll get back to you. Supportive setting. This is pretty much easy to comprehend, but just quickly um, walk you through it. It's set and setting. So make sure that the setting in which you are consuming theogens is comfortable. It's trustworthy. It's um, nice and you know you don't need to rush anywhere that you know people that are surrounding you are trustworthy at least and you can really rely on them if something goes sideways like you're having a challenging experience and they can help you so supportive setting is critical uh, make sure that you prepare some snacks water i don't know do something that nobody will get um will try to get your intention, attention in the upcoming hours so that you can concentrate on exploring your own psyche. Mindfulness is a topic that is pretty widely discussed nowadays, but um, just to give you an idea what mindfulness is, is being present in the moment, being aware of own sensations, of own feelings, of whatever is happening in the body and, you know, being in the moment. And it's a hard practice in a sense because it requires resilience and cultivation but once you have the ability to be present in the moment you can then use that to you know um, get in touch with your body get in touch with your feelings and this is critical for any intuition journey integration plan think up front like how are you going to integrate your experience and it could be notes that you lay up front it could be questions that you write down before it could be something planned in your schedule in your calendar that would require you to sit without any distractions and concentrate on integrating that experience because after all if you don't integrate an experience it's just another trip nothing else but you can get a lot of value in terms of your self-development, healing your own traumas. And of course, I'm not advocating for self-healing here because, you know, it could be really challenging, especially you have uh, PTSD or some other serious mental illness that could actually reopen a very deep wound and you may not be able to handle uh, it by yourself. But in those cases, there are, of course, supportive uh, networks that are existing out there. Uh, one of those is ICers. If you don't know about them, put it in the comments. I'll get back to you. I'll send a couple of links. They do provide free of charge uh, consultations for people who are experiencing a really challenging times with uh, either integration or just, you know, their own uh, infusion trip. Finally, support network. So make sure that um, not necessarily network per se, but support systems that you have somebody they can discuss it with. It means that ideally you need to be a part of some sort of network of an infusion enthusiast or psychonauts or other fellow people who you can speak with. Don't forget, unfortunately, till this day, psychedelics is an extremely stigmatized topic and I don't know how long it has to pass before it changes. But nevertheless, there are people who share this interest. At least those are the people that are watching these videos, I guess. So in these comments, you can, you know, get different perspectives you can ask questions to fellow psychonauts and you know share the knowledge and of course you can go to a sources like aerovid which is pretty much the oldest resource for psychonauts out there okay so those are key elements 
What are the strategies that you can implement in order to make sure that your psychedelic experience is integrated in your life? One that is the most critical one I call is journaling. So it's not that I came up with it, it's there in the guide, but journaling is critical. Meditation is also important, that helps you to reconnect with yourself, with your feelings again, and engaging with the community is also helpful. But journaling, by far, in my thinking, is the most beneficial. There is a slight problem with the journaling. It's not that common for people to do journals in the first place and to, you know, sit and take time to write something to themselves. This is not a common practice, I would say. And whenever you're telling to people that, you know, you need to do the journaling, they're like, yeah, 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 and they don't do it. And it's a shame because whenever you're sitting down, whenever you're putting effort towards, you know, making sure that your thoughts, your feelings, your experiences are placed into specific words, you can then make sense out of them. Otherwise, it's going to be hard. And there is an interesting thing about entheogens is that it is pretty much impossible sometimes to explain your own feelings and experiences to anybody. If you ever tried it, I, I don't know how you do it because uh, to me it is always puzzling and frustrating because wh whatever I was feeling during my Ethiopian experience, I was never able to properly explain to another human being. That's why attempts like journaling are really helpful, especially if you're uh, following a microdosing protocol, which is extremely helpful in understanding what is manifesting from your deep levels of psyche and whether or not it is affecting you in a bad way because unfortunately adverse effects can happen to you and uh, it is important to make sense of them to note them so that you can then bring them to your therapist that could help you deal with uh, tough material if you cannot do it by yourself, of course, and it's totally fine to ask for help here, okay? Don't forget about it, don't be the victim of uh, people saying you can deal with it on your own, just, you know, get together, put yourself together, or whatever they say. It's just bullshit. If you need help, ask for help. It's totally normal. We're all humans. Oh, by the way, if you liked this video or previous ones, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We need to spread the knowledge further so that people don't harm themselves and use this knowledge towards proper integration and further self-development. This is pretty much the sole reason I'm doing this. Well, not only, also destigmatizing the conversation around psychedelics and mental health illnesses. All right, so there are six domains in that guide by MAPS that are uh, there to help you integrate the knowledge and originally they are referring to a model created by I'm gonna read it because I don't remember their names Bathie, Majewski and Kudovor it's called uh, Synthesized Model of Integration it's pretty good I advise you to go through it but if you don't there's no need you can just download the MAPS integration guide and go through it so what are the domains? Mind, Body, Spirit, Relationship, Lifestyle and finally Nature I'll quickly walk you through them each one by one. So mind is pretty clear, you know, this is the rational thinking. And of course, in the guide, you have the questions like what type of emotions are going through your mind, what type of feelings, uh, maybe there are some uh, memories that pop into your mind and things like this. And those are the questions that you need to just literally sit and reflect on. So whatever that is concerned with your conscious thinking, with the well, reasonable, reasonable, yeah, rational part of your brain the ones that in charge of your thinking this is the mind domain which is pretty you know clear in my view if not you may ask questions i'm happy to answer at all times body is an interesting one not in many cases people do have a good connection with their body and what does it mean it could be like yoga exercises it could be like physical exercises and understanding like what is literally happening with their body like Whenever you're feeling pain, what type of pain is it? Is it because, you know, you've been sitting in an inconvenient posture for quite a while? Or maybe you're like literally experiencing an autoimmune disease and you're just ignoring it. So that connection with the body can help you put your 
attention towards yourself and reconnect with yourself. And this may sound, you know, spiritually and woo type of stuff, but if you do not have a proper connection with your body, you are disconnected. And that means that you can miss something really serious. So whenever your body is, you know, sending you signals of pain or something, it wants your attention towards something. So make sure you connect with body and think of the practices that you can implement in your daily life, whether it's dancing, whether it's physical exercising, whether it's something else, how can you connect with your body more strongly okay third one is spirit and i'm an atheist or what's it called um not an atheist but uh, shit i forgot the word so basically i don't believe in any god in particularly however i do believe that there are things that we cannot really explain and to me spirituality is about this i don't know mystical aspects of being that nobody can pretty much explain but there are some people who are trying oh yeah i remember the word agnostic right so unless i <laughs> seek information i won't believe in it although i do have uh, my own beliefs around like general common unconscious or the energy field that is uniting us all i don't know how to explain it and i guess there have been people who try to do that um my if i remember correctly blavatsky or somebody else like global unconsciousness and jung tried to explain it as well but spirituality is something that we cannot like put into words and for some people it is a connection with god for others it's a connection with something else but this is the nature of entheogens touch with the divine within right so think about the spiritual practices that you have or maybe you don't have and maybe you want to implement in your daily life and i'm not telling you to go to church and pray there's no point in it spirituality is not about being religious spirituality is about connecting with something bigger than us like universe i don't know whatever you call it okay relationship so this is important one whenever you're having an insight from your psychedelic experience one must think how can i implement this into my daily life in terms of my communication with the people who are surrounding me one thing you need to make sure of and definitely need to is to avoid any serious decision within at least a month after your psychedelic experience because sometimes people have this epiphany you know they need to get rid of some people from their life or end relationships or shit like that and of course whenever somebody has this epiphany it doesn't mean you should act on it because you need to take time take a deep breath reconnect with yourself think logically you know get your thinking around that particular decision put your thoughts together and only then after one month period if you still think this is a good idea do it but of course understand the consequences however your experience ideally should be integrated maybe it could reflect in building new connections maybe it could reflect in you know saying something to people that you've been wanting to say them for quite a while or something like that next domain is lifestyle what are you going to change in your daily habits whether it's the food consumption whether it's the physical exercising whether it's again journaling or the way you structure your day or maybe new protocols that you implement i don't know like cold showers like breathing techniques and something like that this is extremely important because if there are no changes in the lifestyle that means again that not much has been integrated because you can you know work on the other domains but they're all connected and interconnecting between each other finally the last domain is nature and this is i, I want to say one of the most critical but they're all critical however whenever people have the inviogen experience they truly get this mystical connection with mother nature regardless of where they are but of course it is fundamentally better to have this experience in nature because there you can really connect with flora with plants you can see the trees breathing or even talking to you well not literally talking but you know and sending you messages and when people are having experiences on ayahuasca for example oftentimes they 
report feeling this connection with Gaia represented by like a huge tree that is communicating with them. So whenever we're talking about the nature domain, think what you can do. Like maybe you want to go to the park, maybe it's a camping journey, maybe it's just a walk in the woods or a hiking trip or something like that. But connection with nature is proven to have a positive impact on mental health. So think about what you can do in that domain. So those are the six domains. Uh, let me reiterate them quickly mind, body, spirit, relationship, lifestyle, and nature. And of course, there are challenges that are, you know, had, they're going to be in your way. One of the challenges would be probably laziness <laughs> or a feeling of, you know, maybe insecure or weird by, you know, doing something that you've never done before. But unless you start doing it, you're not going to integrate any of the experiences. And of course, you may face a challenging experience, so-called bad trip. But of course, whenever you're facing one, it doesn't mean that the universe is punishing you. No, no, no. It means that basically there is material in the subconscious level of your psyche that manifested and you probably need to deal with it. Because in the majority of cases, 87% of the people who had a prior challenging experience said that it was really helpful to address some big issues in their life and reassess something really important. So don't just throw it out and call it a bad trip. Try to integrate that knowledge. Try to understand and make sense of what you were experiencing and what we were thinking. Remember, with each and every day passing after your psychedelic experience, it will be harder and harder to recollect the emotions, the memories and something else that related with that particular trip. So the sooner you start, the better. And of course, the window of neuroplasticity opens up as soon as you consume entheogens. And within this window, you can truly implement changes in your psyche and rewire your neural circuits. Sounds like magic, but it's true. Unfortunately, it requires your effort. So if you don't do anything, nothing's going to change. Well, yeah, because therapists are not there to make you accountable for that. There are coaches that can make it happen, like me, for instance. Yeah, let's put that aside. Anyway, so this is pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you today. So let me quickly summarize. There is a self-help guide that can be used for integrating psychedelic experience on your own. But don't forget, there are safety measures in place that you need to take into account so that you don't fuck up your own psyche, okay? Please stay safe and make sure to integrate the knowledge and let me quickly go through what I've talked through for the previous, I don't know how many minutes. So intention prior to the journey is critical. Supportive setting is as well because if you don't have it, you may have a challenging trip. Mindfulness, think of the practices that you can implement in your life. Think of the integration plan. And of course, build support system, whether it's a network of people, a community, or something else that will help you integrate. And of course, the six domains that are there to help you structure your thinking and your knowledge and your experience from that infusion journey, which is mind, body, spirit, relationship, lifestyle and nature thank you for watching i hope that was useful and uh, if not let me know otherwise like share and subscribe spread the knowledge about our reduction strategies and integration thank you for watching and until next time